Next up is number 28. Which statement describes the prevailing wind direction in midwinter in the Gulf Coast area? I have to admit, this one threw me for a loop. And immediately, my mind goes to looking at the Coast Pilot, one of the references available. But uh, the latest guidance from the Coast Guard only has reprints of the Coast Pilots available. And typically, I don't see Coast Pilots for the Gulf Coast area. So I thought about maybe pilot charts, which are um, climatic charts for ocean basins. Um, and I kind of looked through the, the Gulf Coast um, Coast Pilots as well and couldn't really find this specific answer. But um, my best guess was to use the pilot charts uh, in combination with general knowledge of how the air circulates around the planet to say that 30 to 40 percent of the midwinter winds are from the northern quadrant. Right. So um, the winds are definitely not variable, definitely not strongest in March. So C is out. So the choice is between A and B. And I know that the winds generally don't flow from the south at that point. Um, the north is where the winter kind of cold fronts are that come through. So that was my guess. I have to say I might have got that one wrong on the exam just because I couldn't find a reference. And I apologize for that. But um, moving on to the next one. Your vessel has a draft of 24 feet. On the 7th of April, you want to pass over a temporary obstruction and um, it's near Level Island Mass. It's got a charted depth of 22 feet. So allowing for a safety margin, what time after one o'clock can you make this passage? And you can see the choices there. So uh, this is a pretty fun problem to solve. And so what we're looking here, in essence, is we're saying our draft is 24 feet. Um, we have a safety margin of 3.1 feet. And um, it's near Lovell Island um, on the 7th of April and after 0100, what time can we pass? So basically we want to say, okay, the charted depth here is uh, 22 feet charted. And our draft is 24, so we need at least plus two extra feet to deal with our draft. And then there's a 3.1 safety margin. So we kind of need, in essence, 5.1 feet above datum. All right, so we're looking for like a zero tide plus 5.1 feet in order to pass over this thing. So the problem is really saying, what time will the tide be at least 5.1 feet? Okay, so if we reframe the question in that sense, we can approach it um, like a normal tide problem. And so for a normal tide problem, we kind of set up our grid. And up here is the reference station. So. If we look in the um, tide tables, it's reference station 941. And we see that the high tide and the low tide are given. Um, the offsets are zero, two minutes for the high, and zero, one minute for the low. And the ranges of tide differences there. For the high, it's uh, minus four feet. For the low, it's uh, zero feet difference. So these come from the um, table two corrections. And we see that it's on Boston is our reference station. So we look up the tides in Boston for the 7th of April. And we see that there's a low and a high. There's a low at 0, 0, 0,0022 and a high at 0, 0,637. All right. The high is 8.5 feet and the low is 1.8 feet. So notice it's not zero. So that's uh, maybe helpful for us. <clears throat> So to make the corrections at Lovell Island, we're going to take the low tide of 0, 0, 0,0022 and we're going to add the one minute to get 0, 0, 0,0023. For the high tide, we'll take the 0, 0,0637 and we'll add two minutes to the high, so that makes it 0, 0,0639. So we get our times there, right? And then the differences for height, I'm just going to move down a little bit on the screen. For the low, it's 1.8 feet, and there's no change to the um, tide there. So we've got 1.8 feet at 0023. 
For the high, it's 8.5 feet from Boston. And the correction is um, minus, sorry, minus 0.4 feet on that. That leaves it to be 8.1 feet at 0639. So given this information, the last step is to use table three in the back of the tide tables. And anytime you're using table three, you need certain pieces of information. You need the duration of rise and fall. Um, and so if we kind of compare these two times here, 639 minus 23 minutes is six hours and 16 minutes for the duration of rise and fall. For the range of tide, that's going to be 8.1 feet minus 1.8 feet, or in other words, 6.3 feet. And then the last piece of information, usually um, you're going to get the time from nearest high or low, but since we're solving a problem based on the time, we're going to look at the correction factor. And so given that we want our water, in essence, to be 5.1 feet above datum, um, what we can do is we can take our either our low or our high, and I'm going to choose the high in this case. If we take 8.1 feet minus the 5.1 datum, we end up with a correction of 3.0 feet, right? So if we take this number, this number, and this number, and go into the, the, the um, table three, we end up with a time difference of about 257. And you may get a slightly different answer. Um, the directions say you can just choose the closest value, but if you decide to interpolate for a slightly closer value, you might get a little bit of a difference. And then so in essence, what they're saying is if you take 0639 minus 257, you're going to end up with a time of 342, a clock time of 342. And that's going to be the moment when the tide is um, safe to pass. So for the problem, they say, what is the earliest time after 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that this passage can be made? The answer is going to end up being 342 in that case. Okay, the next problem is saying the uh, points on the Earth's surface where the magnetic dip is 90 degrees are called what? Well, um, this one might be apparent to you kind of right away if you know the definition of dip from celestial navigation, but um, looking at isoclinal lines, you know, we'll look up that definition here, you can see the image. Um, isoporic lines, you can see that definition. Those don't quite fit. The magnetic equator doesn't quite fit either, so the magnetic poles is where our mind should go for the answer. Um, however, just to kind of explain what's happening there, is we're saying that uh, normally on the Earth there's a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole. And if your ship is somewhere up in the northern hemisphere, you may be thinking that your magnetic compass points to, to north, right? And that is kind of true, but really what your compass is doing is it's pointing um, to the pole itself, not along the curvature of the Earth, but like directly to the pole. And so there's an angular difference between kind of the horizon and where that uh, compass is pointing. So if I was to exaggerate the drawing, it might be a little more apparent. You know, let's kind of zoom in. Here's the north magnetic pole, and then the Earth kind of curves away like that in both directions. And maybe the equator is like here. And so if your ship now is um, over in this vicinity, your compass is not necessarily pointing along this path, Instead, it's pointing straight to the pole. So this is the angle called dip. And if you think about when your ship kind of moves along the curve here, um, and if you get directly above the pole, your compass is gonna be pointing down, 90 degrees straight down. So the answer in that case is the compass will, uh, the, the dip will be um, 90 degrees when you're right over the poles themselves, because your compass is gonna wanna point straight down, actually. All right, and then next, uh, the climate in the northern Gulf Coast. So again, just like the first problem in this video, it's tough to kind of find some of these exact wordings based on the references that are published. And so these two questions um, in this video 
I would probably say are not going to show up on your average test because most of your Coast Pilot questions come out of Coast Pilot 2 or 3, which are kind of the northeast part of the U.S. But northern Gulf Coast, generally speaking, um, does it vary from warm to subtropical? Not exactly. Is it humid and subtropical throughout the year? No, it's a warm and marine type of climate. So you're going to look in the Coast Pilot for these type of questions. And again, um, most of your Coast Pilot questions are going to come out of... Um, not the Gulf Coast, but up in like New England waters, which are references that are easily available online. But this is uh, definitely like a, a a Coast Pilot question. Uh, there might be a little bit of information in Bowditch that you can use for general circulation of weather uh, around the United States, but that's where I would go for something like that. <laughs>